Hello, and welcome to Philosophy 1250, Critical Thinking. My name is Dr. Robert Fudge, and I'll be your instructor for this semester. Critical thinking, also called informal logic, is a branch of logic, which itself is a branch of philosophy. However, this is not a philosophy class in the traditional sense. We're not going to be examining philosophical issues like arguments for and against the existence of God, or the nature of free will, or the standards of right and wrong action. Rather, critical thinking is a skills class. More precisely, we're going to be learning how to identify, represent, and ultimately, and most importantly, how to evaluate both arguments and explanations. These are skills that, of course, are central to philosophy, but more importantly, they're central to almost any other discipline out there. So I think that you'll find that the skills you'll pick up in this class will serve you well for the rest of your college career. Now let's turn to the syllabus. As I said, I'm Dr. Robert Fudge, and my office is in room 140 of Linquist Hall. You can contact me by phone or by email, or you can always contact me over Canvas's conversation stream. My office hours are Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 11.30 a.m. to 12.20 p.m. and by appointment. You can always just drop in during my regular office hours, but if those aren't convenient, do feel free to either call or email me to set up an alternate time to meet. The required text for this class is one that I wrote entitled The Art and Science of Critical Thinking. You will not find this in the bookstore. Rather, it's an e-text that is available online through the University Bookstore's digital textbook system, Redshelf. I provide a link here where you can access it. The text itself costs $40, and all proceeds from the sale are used to enhance university programs and offerings. I do not profit from it at all. Now importantly, this text cannot be returned. Once you purchase it, it is yours. In case you're not sure whether you want to stay enrolled in the class, you can link to the introduction and first chapter of the book under the assignments list below on the syllabus. You will have two weeks to make a final decision before you have to actually purchase the non-refundable text. The course description and course objectives I think you can read through on your own, so let's talk about requirements. Each of the assignments has associated with it at least one textbook section to read with an accompanying video lecture. We're going to be looking at the textbook in a few minutes, and you'll see that at the beginning of each chapter section, there is a link to the lectures. Next, we have assessment quizzes. You'll be required to complete a short, that is five question, assessment quiz for each main reading section for a total of 19 quizzes worth five points each. These are administered over Canvas. They're open note, open book. They can be taken from any computer location. Because each of these is worth such a small percentage of your final grade, you cannot make them up. However, I do drop your lowest score. Next, we have signature assignments. As part of Weber State's Gen Ed program, all Gen Ed classes are required to incorporate a big question and a signature assignment as part of the requirements. The big question for this class is, what is the relevance of critical thinking to your discipline? The signature assignment will involve your interviewing someone in your discipline on this question and then writing a three to four page summary and analysis of the interview. I'll provide the details on this later. Finally, we have exams. I will administer four exams during the semester. You can take these at any of the Weber State testing centers and you will be allowed two full pages of notes, front and back, for a total of four sides to take in with you for each of them. Because the testing center collects and keeps notes after you finish your exams, you might want to make an extra copy for yourself. If you live outside of the testing service area, that is, outside of Weber, Davis, and Morgan counties, you can request to set up a proctor to administer the exam. You should do this early in the semester rather than waiting for the last minute. Let's look for a moment at the Weber State Testing Center's webpage. As you can see, there are a number of testing centers across campus, as well as at the Davis Center. They don't all have the same hours, and the library testing centers is actually open on Sundays for limited hours, 1 until 4.30 p.m. I've had students in the past request that they be able to take an exam on Sundays, and so as we'll see, some of the exams are open on Sundays. The exam dates are listed as follows. 
The first three exams will all be open from Fridays until Sundays, while the fourth exam, which is a non-cumulative final, will be available from Monday through Wednesday of final exam weeks. If there's some emergency that prevents you from being able to take your exam at the regular scheduled time, please contact me as soon as possible. If you know that you're going to have to miss an exam because of a vacation or athletic event or other university activity, you can arrange with me ahead of time to take the exam early. So, given these requirements, there will be a total of 540 points possible during the semester. Your final grade will be based on this percentage scale. The policy regarding academic dishonesty is a university policy, and for our purposes, you must take all of your exams on your own, and you must be the sole author of your signature assignment. As I mentioned above, you're welcome to work together on your quizzes. Any students that are found guilty of cheating or plagiarism are subject to failure of a specific assignment, or in more serious cases, failure of an entire course. Furthermore, as per the university policy, I will submit the name of any violator to the Dean of Students Office. If you have any questions about this, please ask. Technical assistance. I'm not a good technical person to consult. If you're having problems with um, KyTester or with Canvas or with any sort of hardware or, uh, or software issues, please contact the people listed here. If you're having problems with our textbook, Redshelf has its own support line, so please contact them. Next, we have some university resources that you might find helpful for any of your classes. These include tutoring services, student support services, and the Student Success Center. You might also have noticed in logging into Canvas that the university now subscribes to something called um, U-Tutoring. I haven't been able to check whether that includes tutoring for critical thinking, but if it does, I'll certainly send out an announcement about that. The emergency closure statement, again, is a standard policy. Um, if the university is forced to close for any sort of extended period of time, please check this site for instructions. The university requests that you sign up for code PURPLE, and this is a good way to be alerted to any sort of campus closures, including for weather, or any sort of emergencies. Finally, we have requests for special accommodations. If you require accommodations or services due to a disability, you must contact the Services for Students with Disabilities office. This is in room 181 of the Student Services Center or room 221 at the Davis campus. The center can also arrange to provide course materials, including the syllabus, in alternative formats upon request. You can also call them at extension 6413. Okay, so let's look at the assignments list. All of the assignments refer to our textbook, The Art and Science of Critical Thinking. Let's look at the first two weeks. As you'll see, you have three assignments that are due during the first two weeks. These are sections 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3 out of the textbooks. The first of the assignments is to read section 1.1 and to watch the accompanying video lecture. Now again, remember I said above that I'm providing you the introduction and first chapter of the textbook, and you can link to it here. Further, because this is a PDF, you can't launch the video from it, so you can actually watch the accompanying video by clicking this link. If you have any questions about the material in the section, you can click here. Once you've done the reading and watched the video lecture, please complete the exercises and check your answers against those that I will provide. Once you feel comfortable with the material, you'll be in a position to complete Quiz 1. You'll notice that each of the quizzes has a due date. Once again, if you miss a quiz, you cannot make it up. Sometimes students will ask whether they have to turn in the homework. In fact, they don't. Once again, I provide you the answers to the homework, and so they're really exercises to help you to prepare for the quizzes and for the exams. Scrolling down a little bit, you'll see that in weeks three and four, you'll work through chapter two, and then we'll have our first exam from Friday, September 20th through Sunday, September 22nd. And then the rest of the course will be conducted similarly. Okay, now let's take a look at the textbook. I've logged into the textbook here on the Red Shelf site, and you'll see up in the left-hand corner here we have some tools. So if we click on the sidebar menu, we can pull up the table of contents. This is an easy way to navigate through the text. We can also 
look at more detail under um, each of the chapters. And so if I want to go to section 1.1, identifying arguments, I can just click here. Here's the first page of section 1.1. And as you see, we have this box here that says section 1.1 lecture video. This is where you will click to launch the lecture for this section. If we go to the end of this section, and we can do that by clicking these arrows to navigate, you will find the exercise sets that you will be working on. OK, let's close the table of contents and go back to the sidebar menu. And you'll find that there are a lot of interesting tools that you can use in this text. You can insert your own bookmarks. You can create your own notes and highlight certain passages. You can create your own study guides and flashcards. You can even print a portion of the text if you like, and some of it you can use offline. So there are a lot of interesting features that you can use with this text. Hopefully you'll find the textbook a very valuable resource. Okay. The last item I want to talk about are discussions. You might have noticed that there are no required discussions during the semester. However, I will be periodically posting discussion questions uh, to the Canvas page. I strongly recommend that you answer these and receive feedback. These questions are going to elaborate on and help to clarify some of the material out of the text. It's just one more way for you to help prepare for the exams. That's all I have for you now. Uh, I would ask you then to go back to the Canvas main page and post an introduction about yourself. Introduce yourself to the rest of the class and welcome to Critical Thinking.